What's up everyone, Matt Horspool here. I'm an adventure travel photographer based in Sydney, Australia. And if you're here now, you're uh, undoubtedly excited to hear about a, a new product that's just been launched, the Shimoda Explore version two. Now, if you're new to this channel, I cover all types of uh, content, reviews, tech, uh, film, photography, all that jazz, underwater photography. Uh, if that kind of stuff excites you, or you wanna see more stuff from Shimoda, about Shimoda, uh, do not hesitate to hit that like, subscribe button below. I'm only a new channel, but it seems that from my last Shimoda review that people really related to uh, what I had to say. So hopefully this review, I can do the same thing. So like most of my other reviews, uh, full disclaimer, I am a Shimoda ambassador. I'm not getting paid to do this review. Uh, Shimoda reached out, asked if I would like to do it in return for some equipment. I said, yes, I love the gear. Um, I would love to take it out and see what it's like and give my honest thoughts and opinions to you guys. Now, Shimoda will not be seeing this before it's released. In fact, I am scrambling because of COVID. I was meant to be out filming a lot more stuff for this, but uh, Sydney just went into lockdown, so I'm going to try and make do from my bedroom. So as you may have seen, Shimoda have released three new bags. The first being the Explore 25, the Explore 30, and then the third, the Explore 35. And those numbers pretty much just mean the litre capacity. Now, when Shimoda asked which one I would like to use, well, knowing uh, if you've seen any of my other reviews, you have seen that I actually own plenty of other Shimoda bags. So I decided the one that would fit into uh, the line perfectly for me would be the 25 litre. Now, if you haven't seen my review of the Action X, it's a very long one, but uh, I think you might enjoy it. Uh, it gives some good comparisons to the Explore version one series, the Explore 40, which I own, and the Explore 60. So I'll leave the link up below, up below, up top, and uh, in the description, you can check that one out as well. I also have a blog review of the Explore 40 series where I took a canyon in and went all around Europe with it. So if you'd like to see images and hear about that one, that one will also be linked up here and down below. If you have any comments or questions on any of these bags or any other Shimoda equipment, uh, please do not hesitate to leave a comment below and I'll endeavor to answer it as quickly and as honestly as possible. Uh, I do try and get back to all of you, so I apologize if it's not uh, quick. So basically Shimoda has brought out this little bad boy and this one is the Explore 25 as I mentioned before. And Shimoda say they've re, uh, redesigned it to be meet the needs of the travel and landscape photographers, which like their version one models in the Explore 40 and Explore 60, uh, these packs are just the smaller versions of those but updated with different features. And while these bags are, are catered to, more towards the travel and landscape photographers, the Action Series, such as my Action X 30, are more aimed at the sports and action photographers, uh, a little bit more rugged, but we'll go into that one as well soon. What is different about the version two and the version one is that the, uh, the version two models, the 30, sorry, the 25, the 30, and the 35 are built off the same chassis as the Action X series, which I think is a very good thing because as if you've seen my other review, I believe the Action X uh, series, especially that 30, is just a phenomenal bag with features um, that cater for everyone bringing that, that design chassis into this, this model, I think was a brilliant idea. So both of them, are both Action and the Explore version two and version one are built for serious uh, landscape and outdoor photographers and content creators, except the, the this line um, kind of caters for people who are also just traveling and, and carry the bag around day to day or, or maybe on smaller shoots around the city and don't necessarily need that big action rugged uh, type bag. So Shimoda say that this model is designed for fast movers, people with smaller torsos and those who need to carry a bag around day to day and maybe who do small photography jobs. And what's brilliant about these models are that they'll 100% fit under the seats of all aircraft um, airline carriers, uh, whereas the, the larger bags, well, some of them only fit within the EU and then some of the large ones in the US. I've taken the Action X30 and even the 40 Explore uh, around the world and they have just fit under the seats, but this one will 100%, it, it's small. 
So some of the new key features that Shimoda are advertising for this new series of bag are the lockable YKK zippers, uh, really tailored towards the travel, travel market. It's sized to meet the carry-on uh, requirements as I mentioned before. It has dual access document pockets, it's got a hidden passport pocket. It has a large luggage pass-through handle which I think is absolutely brilliant. An aired out vent uh, ventilated straps and a back pad which is a little bit different to the previous models. It now features a base handle as well which is also super handy that we'll get into as well soon. Uh, and there's also some side pockets, internal side pockets for filters which we'll also look at as well. And inside the straps you'll find uh, these little loops here and they're designed for using radios and wireless labs so for the content creators who are using wireless labs like the Rode Go uh, system can actually put them in here and they'll be weather sealed inside the pocket. So some of the differences between the 25, the 30 and 35 would mainly be for their use. So. This one being the 25 fits perfectly for my Olympus system, which as you know, I am an Olympus ambassador, so I shoot all small mirrorless, which is another reason I thought that this bag would be a staple piece of equipment in my kit. The 30 series is then designed for pro mirrorless cameras like say like the Sony A7 series or the Canon R series. Non-grip bodies uh, can also fit uh, a drone in there and a couple of lenses and is designed to carry heavier gear and it will fit under most EU airplane seats, so can be used as a carry-on as well. And then we have the 35 uh, liter model, and that one is best suited to larger cameras uh, like the DSLRs or a grip body camera and maybe using a drone as well. So it definitely can fit more in there and it will probably fit underneath most US airline uh, front seats. But by and large, the features, the technology and the, the design are pretty much the same across all three models. So my initial thoughts on the bag. Well, it's no surprise that I absolutely love these bags because, well, I am an ambassador and I only rep things that I really believe in. But I also know that Shimoda is one of those brands who continuously listen to their ambassadors, listen to the public, and are always innovative and thinking of new ways to improve their bags. They're not really stuck in the, um, the, the old style of bags where if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, these guys, are thinking of new things all the time and it just blowing me away all of the features they can actually put inside. So when they actually sent me the bag, I was thinking, well, what can they actually improve upon from the last iterations? Because they're already quite good. But upon opening it and using it, I really found how, uh, just how many little features um, and little tweaks and modifications they've done to make this bag, well, as you'll see over the course of this review, I think it's just amazing. So I love the Explore series, it still comes with me on larger adventures, mainly because I don't have uh, a s larger bags in the Action series, but that Action X30 was just such a brilliant bag and I use it so many times. I, it is really suited for adventure and I've taken it on many adventures before, but I also use it around, uh, take it to weddings when I shoot it, but being that uh, the khaki green colour, uh, people often ask me what adventure I'm going on at the wedding, so it's not really suited for the day-to-day -day kind of shooting, whereas this bad boy definitely is. Okay, so on to some of the features in more detail and why I love them. I actually took this bag uh, on a canyoning trip, like, like I took uh, the Explore 40 on uh, when I first got it, I went took it to canyoning. This time I didn't actually swim the bag across pools of water, but it still got wet, muddy, and scraped along a lot of rocks, and I think it, it just held up. So you're not going to find a picture-perfect version of this bag because it's all muddy from that adventure, and I think if it's not, then you probably don't need this bag. Okay, first thing, handles. This bag has a lot of handles, and I think they've really increased its usability by adding them on. So we've got a standard top handle, which is nice and soft. I mentioned that they have this smaller one here, and this is really, really handy for passing the bag. Now, uh, when we went canyon, I was always passing the bag uh, by a combination of the three handles. Uh, it just helps provide so much more support when picking it up off the ground, um, but it's just so much more maneuverable. The addition of the really large handle here is uh, different to the action has a small handle which is still really handy on the side and so does the Explore, that's the Explore 60 there. 
But this one is actually wide enough to use with two hands. Because this is aimed at more travel photographers, it also will sit on top of your roller bag, which means you don't actually have to carry it on your back when you're moving around the airport or moving around anywhere. Uh, I've got a big Pelican case coming on, uh, on order soon as well. So this will be able to sit on top of that, slot the handle through there and not have to worry about carrying it on my back. Now the material of these bags are phenomenal. Uh, I've said, that, said it before in all my other reviews. Uh, I feel that this, the material of this one, whilst it looks very much the same as the original version one, I feel that it's a little bit, uh, no, it feels like the Action Series material, which was super, super tough. Now, as I mentioned in my last review, uh, the bags can be prone to marking, but they will wipe, all those marks aren't actually damaging the bag. You can just wipe it off with a, a damp cloth and it looks good as new. And after a few months of heavy use anyway, you should be reconditioning the bag. Uh, and it, I'll leave links in the description below on some great Shimoda videos that show you how to actually look after the bag's material. Now I've scratched these bags up against rocks, uh, sticks, and dragged it through mud and thrown it down slopes and nothing is ever torn on it. And they look good as new when you wipe them wipe them clean. It's, it really is phenomenal how you can get such a light bag but being so tough. The waterproofness as always is phenomenal. If you've seen in one of my other reviews that I did actually put the, the original Explore in the water and pushed it across when we're canyoning and minimal water came inside. Do not hesitate to use these out in the rain and snow. Over long, long periods of time, so like if I'm out in the rain for five or six hours, I will put the rain cover on. It just makes sense because water will eventually get in. It's not 100, it's not a dry bag, of course. Uh, if you do uh, plan on being outside in the rain, I often put a smaller rain cover over my uh, core unit inside there. So if water does manage to get in, then there's another layer of, of protection on top of uh, the unit. So overall, I, I feel that this bag also has a bit more rigidity to it. The, uh, got the Explore series, well, whilst it was a, a great bag, the version ones, it just was, it was quite soft and supple and, and things would move around in there and the bag wouldn't hold its shape as much, um, which was fine when it was fully packed, but if you only had a few items in there, things would, would be kind of difficult to, uh, they, would, they would rummage around in there. Whereas with the new one, it, it, it's being built on the ActionX uh, chassis, it's actually just a lot more stiff and rigid. Well, not stiff and rigid, but it actually just holds its shape more and it, I, I find that things stay in their position much easier and it's easier to find things when you rummage around quickly. If there's one word that uh, sums up these bags, it's pockets. Now, the original Explore didn't have that many pockets. The Action brought Action Series brought in a lot more pockets and this one has just, it has just hit the mark. Being a landscape and travel oriented bag, people want pockets because there's so many documents and little things, filters, cables, all of that kind of jazz that you need to store somewhere. And that means you need to have pockets. And they're not just put anywhere, like they actually are really well thought out and in locations that you would actually think about putting stuff in. As well as those that are kind of hidden which is a good thing when you're traveling. So let's start with the pockets on the arms. In the original Explore series, they had one uh, solid kind of covered pocket here and then a mesh one on the other side. This time, Shimoda has put a padded one, much like the Action series, that will fit a full-size phone and that's in this one here that expands out. And these are, have got the same weatherproof material on there except for the stretchy component just here, which isn't weather sealed, but will also help uh, fit in those larger phones. And now they've also featured inside a, uh, a series of little straps, which at first before I uh, had read, <laughs> read the specifications and wasn't entirely sure what they were, but they're actually for radios and for putting wireless labs. So if you're a content creator who is using a lab like the Wireless Go, and walking around, you can actually put the lab in there, talk, and it's gonna be out of the weather, which is brilliant. I don't actually have my little radios, but I take little walkie-talkies with me whenever I'm out shooting as well with mates so we can talk to each other and pose models. And I've actually ended up losing four of them. So this time I can put the clip on there and the, this can be open and using, using the walkie-talkie and it's not actually going to need to be removed, which is fantastic. It's on the bag. 
This new pocket on the front here, this pouch kind of thing here, it is new, it was not actually on the original Explore series and it is brilliant, it's, it's, it's not too deep but it, it's quite wide so I can fit in a rain jacket in there really, really easily. Uh, food, maps, um, I'll show you some of the little accessories that have come with um, that have just been released and they actually fit perfectly inside this as well. It was a little bit annoying on the original Explore series that it didn't have an extra front pocket, you only had the internal one here to store things and so you would have to stuff lots of stuff down and then fish around but now that we can separate stuff with another pocket that problem is alleviated. Inside the front flap here which is the same as the Explore version 1's um, we have two little pockets here and and we have our like laptop pouch or the water bladder pouch here and then plenty of room inside the front as well. I find these pockets not only being clear but just amazing. I put my Blistex in there, put business cards in there, put little cables, sometimes batteries. Um, yeah, brilliant. Good, great upgrade from the version one. And then we have our regular hook here for the water bladder. Again, if you saw in my last review, I wish that they had like a little clip or something on here that could hold water bladders that uh, don't have a hook. So sometimes I have to use my carabiner and put it through there, put it through my water bladder and it still does, like in the other models, pull down on the bag there which can, when the water bladder is heavy, it can be a little bit tricky to uh, zip up. So when you do that, water bladder hangs here, you have to hold the top part up here to zip it up. Not necessarily a bad thing but something to note. So there's another hidden pocket that I didn't even know was there until some weeks after when we received the spec sheet. It is oriented for your travel and it's in the inside of the side pocket here. So inside this flap here is a Velcro slot and that there is where designed to put your passport where people, not even you, can remember that your, your passport's in there, so it's really good. I think the Velcro runs all the way along there, so you could actually put money and, and other documents in there, and it'll seal quite nicely. I would suggest, though, if you're using coins or notes, maybe, maybe put it inside another little sleeve and put it inside there, or a paper envelope. Another really welcome addition to the version two models is taking a note out of the Action X series and we now have two water bottle or tripod pockets that can also be tucked away inside the camera when, sorry, inside the bag when not in use. And they can fit pretty much every tripod size that I have. Um, they're not, uh, they've got the mesh like the Action X series as well. Pretty tough, I have been scraping these on, on rocks and nothing's happened so far. I did tear the Explore um, which was a bit more of a flimsy material. You will notice so the difference between the Action series and these ones, and sorry, the version two Explore, is that we now have the, the, the standard um, straps that feed through on the side through here and around, whereas on the Action series, we have the much more robust uh, I don't even know what material this is, like a, a really strong rubber material um, that's less prone to to fraying and being cut from sharper objects like when you put in ice axes or, or snowboard bindings and things like that through there. But these are also a little bit trickier to feed through and, and tighten. And of course these can both be, be tucked away inside the side of your bag. which then creates a much more cleaner aesthetic and uh, footprint. I actually just keep them both out because I like to have a water bottle in one side and the tripod in the other. So Shimoda has gone one step further again and inside the other side, oh, sorry, and inside this one, I'll unclip that. We now have two clear large pouches here and they're designed to put filters in. So. If you're using circular filters like myself, here we go, we've got one here. They can actually slot into here and that, that is padded. This door is padded. 
I am a little hesitant to put my filters in there. We'll go over where I actually store my filters uh, soon when, with, when we look at the pouch, but uh, I, I do put the SD cards. I have a little SD card wallet and that fits in there perfectly and out of the way and can't be lost. So it is really designed for when the bag is flat, you can open that up, reach inside, pull out your memory cards, and zip it back up. Brilliant little pockets. Super tough, super clear so you can figure out what's actually in them and hidden away from prying eyes as well if you need. I should mention why I'm hesitant to put them in there. Uh, sometimes if I've got my tripod on this side or even the water bottle and I bang up against a rock or a wall, there is a, quite a bit of pressure that can be pushed onto the filters. So it depends. If you're just knocking around the city, then that's fine. But I'm pretty tough on my gear and I'd rather have the filters in a different part of the bag. So the bag also features the same uh, layout and design as the Explore 40 version 1 in the top pocket up here. Uh, you've got an internal pocket just here and you've got another internal pocket up here. But the difference is with this one and the version 1 is this pocket is now padded. So you can put some items, items in there that need that little bit of extra protection. And like all of the Shimoda bags, this can actually be completely zipped out if you don't want to have that storage compartment in the top. So the original series also had a pocket along here which you could access in internally. It was a bit of a funny place to put a pocket, uh, oh sorry, a, an access zipper, but this time we've got a, a rear one here and that actually opens up into the core unit which you can see here and then there's also an internal pocket here. I actually put my camera batteries in there so they're kind of out of the way and also another cleaning cloth if I think it's going to be a wet uh, kind of trip. So onto the back pocket sleeve. All of the Shimoda bags are designed to be accessed from the rear. Uh, you see, put the bag down, open it, zip it up, it goes to the left. Now all of the original uh, Shimoda bags have this pocket just here. The other ones though were, whilst they could fit um, different size laptops in it, they weren't necessarily, uh, you couldn't fit much else in there because they were really, really slim. This one, however, has an enormous amount of space here, which is great because once again, I'm gonna show you one of the other little features that are uh, little accessories that I actually use to put into here. Unfortunately, the 25 litre will not fit my 15 inch MacBook Pro with its um, with its case on. So that's all right. Uh, I'll just have to figure out something else. So I'm gonna show you though, that this is my Urban Armour gear on the 15 inch uh, MacBook Pro 2018 model. So it's quite thick, and but it actually won't fit inside there which is a bit of a shame uh, and I don't think it's going to even fit without the case on. So if you've got a 13 inch MacBook or the MacBook Air, then that will probably work better. When you are stuffing stuff inside the back pocket here, you will think that it's going to act extra bulge, but when the bag with the new mirrorless small um, core unit that, is, that comes with this in this, the starter kit, there's actually a, quite a bit of room in here for the this to be stuffed full of items, can even fit a jacket in there, and then there's plenty of room without bulging. In the previous models, if you put a lot of stuff in there, um, it would press, there wasn't as much room with the core unit, and it would uh, create a bit of a bulge in the back, which could get uncomfortable, but this one, I haven't had that issue. So some of the color variations that you can get in this are this charcoal -y black, Oh, I can't remember the exact name, but I'll leave it somewhere written somewhere over the screen. And the same with the green that the Action X come in. So if you prefer something a little bit more subtle, uh, something you can use you know, around the street or for at weddings, as well as going out in the adventures, um, the black might be, might be the best choice for you. But if you want something that's full adventure looking, then I would definitely get the green or the khaki in this model. And Shimoda haven't been known to, to really branch out and give you a ton of different colors, which is 
which is fine. Um, I think the black looks really great with the, with the little leather accents, and I've always been fond of the different colors. I love the, the midnight blue color that the last bag came in as well. Sharing some of the design characteristics of the Action, ba um, the Action X series, this new version now has the same, um, same base on the bag as the Action Series, the Explore version one. Oh, it, I always liked the base, but it was pretty much the same material as the rest of the bag, and it just didn't feel as uh, as rugged. But this one, it, it, I, it's super, super tough, and have no hesitations putting this on rocks or sharp, sharp objects. Um, it does still feature the two little drain holes at the front. Um, you can see that they've kind of looped, they've folded it over here, so to try and alleviate a little bit of water getting there if you did sit it in puddles. Um, I believe they've put the drain holes on the front here in case your water bladder leaks and it can drain out and it doesn't flood your bag. But just keep in mind, you can't just sit this bag in a water puddle like you would a, a proper dry bag because water can actually seep inside. For those who are wondering, yes, the Peak Design capture clip does fit on this bag. I wouldn't recommend putting it up here been such a small little bag, uh, the camera kind of pops over the top. I keep it down low here, uh, and I only have a small camera anyway, so putting stuff inside this pocket, you may not fit a phone or a bulky item with the with the camera lens facing down anyway, uh, but it does fit on there and I use it all the time. You can probably see in some of these videos that I do have uh, my camera pretty much attached to that all the time, which also means that I can keep my EM1 Mark III, which is a light camera on the outside, carry either a heap of lenses, I can carry my drone in here, or I can carry, I even put my Blackmagic Pocket 4K with a uh, the Sigma 18 to 35 inside here as well, along with some lenses, and carried some extra gear in the other pocket. So you can actually fit a ton of gear in the 25 if you pack it smartly and, and utilize other options like the capture clip. So the straps have been redesigned as well, um, along with the back flap. No longer have we got the the rather hard kind of, I don't know, I don't even know how you would describe it, but it's definitely a lot more solid and, and, and less pliable and a lot, a lot less breathable um, material uh, on the original bag and even on the Action Series bag. Whereas this new one now has the breathable foam, huge amounts of padding in it on the hips, uh, on the outside and a brilliant addition to also being in the strap. So when you carry more weight, uh, it actually feels so much lighter and softer because, because there's more padding. The straps aren't necessarily wider here. Um, yes, the chest straps are a little bit wider. Pretty much the same design as the Explore version one. I haven't actually gotten to use this in extreme heat, but I know that this is going to be so much nicer on a really hot, sweaty back than the original um, backs on the other series of bags because those really just stuck to your back um, and could get quite sweaty. Which, if you're in adventure pho photography, you just deal with, but why not have a little bit of extra creature comfort as well? So the straps are adjustable like all of the Shimoda bags. We've got the, the regular pull straps here. We've got the shoulder pull straps up the top as well. We've got our side straps for our tripod or our water bottles as well on here. And the straps are actually adjustable in our small, medium and large. I keep it on the large. I stand 171 centimeters. I've got quite a long torso, broad shoulders. So this fits me nicely. Um, you can unzip and pull these Velcro straps out to adjust them. Like all Shimoda bags, the strap here can be removed. And what it is, is this whole strap pulls completely out and it's got Velcro on there. There's rough Velcro attached inside the bag and it's super strong. Like there's no way that you can pull that apart. I had some questions before about uh, the strap and the fact that it was attached to the back, uh, the back flap rather than the, the internal aluminium chassis that it's got to keep it rigid and whether if it was going to distort the bag at all over a long period of time when it was heavy. This this flap is pretty damn solid and when it is zipped up, which is a super hefty zipper and attached like 
up against your back. There is no issue whatsoever. Um, it works really nice with the aluminium frame when it's zipped up. And of course, you're not going to walk around with the bag unzipped anyway. In my previous Action X review, you also I also talked about um, the fact that I have a size 30 waist and it in summer, some of the straps, sometimes the straps don't have enough adjustment to make it really, really tight around my hips. This I know I've, I've raised with Shimoda and they've also mentioned that there is other people like that as well that can also struggle with that. However, it's just not a viable option to create a, a, a special small strap for um, the small minority of people that might need it. Uh, there is a video on Shimoda's website that um, they, met, they directed me to on how you can pull this out, cut it, uh, and then Velcro it back in. And there's been no issues whatsoever with that. I haven't actually tried it. Um, during winter and when you've got a jumper on it or a jacket, there's no issues at all. And I haven't, I found that this bag kind of doesn't need it anyway because you're not carrying as great a load. Perhaps in some of the bigger models, especially in the Action X, the 50, 50 and above, if you've gone on a big adventure, then potentially you might want to look at, at cutting down that strap to make it smaller. They do make the larger straps as well if you need uh, a little extra room. So this bag also features the same quick release, easy to use uh, buckles. They're brilliant. They feel light, but they're super, super strong. I've never broken one or had any issues with them at all. Really good in cold weather or when you're using gloves because you just press here and they just come out nice and easily. Some other little things I've noticed as well when you put your water bladder inside uh, the front and you feed it through the little hole in here. It feeds through the side. Now on the original Explore bag, the little hole to feed the water tube back out and feed it down was really tricky to get to because it was only two fingers uh, wide. So I would often find it very difficult to get the valve through there. However, on the new model, they've given us a much larger hole that can actually fit three fingers in there so the, the water tube is so much easier to feed through. Not really a, a game changer, but it, it's just a nice little um, addition to have uh, when you're rushing around. So you can feed it back through um, and then I often put the bladder through one of these loops here or one of these bungee ones and down into the pocket here because my water bladder doesn't actually have a cap on it. So it dangles around and gets in all sorts of crap. So some considerations when you're deciding if this bag is right for you. Now I've talked about all of the things I really, really love, but obviously there are some things that you might not need to consider when trying to make a choice, especially with the size, the line of um, bags that you might be choosing. Do you need an Explore or do you need an Action X or do you maybe need something else? So some things to consider, especially with the 25, we talked about the MacBook Pro not fitting in this model, but a MacBook Pro 16 inch will actually fit in the Explore 30 and the Explore 35. It definitely fits in the Action X series and without a case on it, will fit in the other Explore bags. If you're wanting to carry a bit more than the bare minimum or you're shooting cameras that are a bit larger than say the Olympus that I use, I would consider getting maybe the 30 or the 35. They're still small bags and everyday literage sizes, they're great for travel as well, uh, considering you can only use a small core unit, but for everyday work and for my line of work where I am just doing shorter trips or even like my day canyoning, I fit so much stuff in here, especially with this extra front pocket in here, um, it was brilliant. In the fact that this is a smaller um, smaller model than the 25, you can fit your drone inside. I use a Mavic 2 Pro and I have put it inside there, but if you're going to be using a lot more gear, I would probably consider getting one of the larger uh, models of bags so you can put your drone in as well. As you've seen in my previous review, I use core unit. Um, and inside I've got it set up like this with my controller, a pad, drone battery on top, my filters, my drone in the bottom, and one of the pads there to protect it. I actually have another battery there as well. And I like to pair this inside, top of my bag in one side, and also having a small unit there. And that will fit inside my Action X30 
Uh, it's not really meant to go in that, but it does fit there fine. And that's how I also set up my Explore series with my drone there. I can take it out, fly my drone, and don't have to take the bag with me. You cannot do that with this one because it's too small. So you will have to put the drone inside the IC, the, the core unit itself or skimp on something else. But there are other options. I'd say get the 35 if you're going to be using the drone or unless you're using a uh, one of the new smaller models of drone like the Air, then that potentially would work with this one as well. So Shimoda have not just released three new bags, but they've also released a, a variety of new little accessories. And I was pretty excited because what photographer out there doesn't love new gear and accessories. So when they sent them to me, they asked what type of filters I use and whether I actually do use filters. Now, sometimes I do use the square rectangular 150 mil filters, but I, they're very, very rare that I do. But now that I shoot a lot more video, I do use circular filters a lot. So I said, send us the circular filter little pouch. So this is what we've gotten. The first thing we have are these pouches. Now this is the 100 series pouch and then there's 150. Um, same, the, made of the same really, really uh, tough material as the bag itself. Um, it has a little clip here that you can hang around the tripod. Um, so when it's done up, same clips as on the bag, nice and easy to open. And it opens out to a pouch like this. And now I can fit one, two, three, four filters and step up rings inside there, which is plenty. I put my variable NDs, polarizers, Promis filters if I'm filming. It's got a padded uh, flap here so when it's folded up, nothing is actually touching against each other because there's padding all around. But it also will hold up more step up rings here and I also have my follow focus gears that can sit in there as well. So this thing I use all the time. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, I haven't got to see the, the larger one, but uh, this is all I need. So I fold that up, wrap it up. Oh, and also has a huge pocket in the front here. It reaches all like the entire length. Again, I haven't really used that yet, but it's there if you need it. So what I do is I wrap these up and instead of using those filter pockets in the side of the bag, I actually open up the bag and because we've got that extra depth in the back pocket here, I slide that in there and it fits beautifully. There's extra depth here, so even with the bag fully fully packed, that zips up nicely and there's no bulge in my back at all. So that's where that filter bag lives all the time now. Another real accessory that they gave, sent me is the travel pouch. Now this is a clear pouch. Um, it's like a little wallet, I guess. Um, and it features a a foam padding in the middle and it, what it is is designed for our uh, modern day need for using masks so the mask your clean masks can sit in one side they can dirty ones can sit in the other or you can put your money uh, band-aids earplugs cables you can pretty much use this for whatever you want um, but it is designed really for like your masks and, and other little travel accessories now I was hoping that this little pouch would fit inside the side hidden passport pocket, but it doesn't, it's actually too deep, but it will quite easily fit in the front of your bag here or pretty much any other pocket. So it's great, if only we could travel. And the last accessory that I was given to use is the mini wrap. Now, initially I was like, oh, this is, this is actually so small. What can I actually use it for? And I have found that I use this all the time. And I actually messaged Shimoda and said, oh, I'm a bit worried that things are going to fall out and because um, there's no little zipper pockets in it, but they assured me it wouldn't and it's been tried and tested and then I'm inclined to agree with them. Uh, I hate my own words. So basically this little wrap has a little pouch opens up, folds out like the other one. And I've got all of my uh, AA batteries in there and AAAs in the, in the bottom. Now it doesn't have a zipper or it doesn't have any Velcro here. Uh, Shimoda have mentioned to me that um, it would cause, cause some uh, abrasions when you're pulling things out. And uh, upon thinking about it, yep, they're smarter than me. That, that would be the case. Nothing actually does fall out as long as you, you are careful. Um, so what the design is of this is it fits, folds that down. You can put your Rode wireless goes, earplugs, other little um, 
things that you need to access uh, regularly. Again, it could be really geared towards that content creators and this can fit over your belt buckle like here or and this is how I use it on our hip straps which I also forgot to mention that it's still got the same little stuff rubbish pouches here for your, um, for your Snickers bar wraps this will feed inside through the loop here and around and that's how I carry it. So on any little adventure, I can have it on my hips, open it up. I need my wireless go, I need a battery, I need um, a little snack, I need a Band-Aid or something, but I don't want to take my bag off, I open it up, it's access to it there. It's the same clear, tough material that's featured inside the other pockets of the bag. So Shimoda have also released two new core units, the small core unit, uh, which features inside this bag. Now they have the same beautiful little flat pouch that goes over the top and zips up to stop all your gear from falling out. Uh, this one also has the side access zipper, which I honestly can say I never use. Uh, I'm not one of those people, photographers, who just swing the bag around and pull the, pull the camera out. I've either got it attached to me or just put the bag on the ground, but that is there if you need it. Now, this being a new model, it is actually slimmer. It fits here. If you add, add this to any of the other bags, the 30 or 35, um, you will need to turn the bag sideways for it to fit and not flop around. If you put it in here, you're going to have extra room, which you might want to do if you need to put a jacket or other clothes or food inside, but that's how you'll need to use it in the larger bag. They've also made a large mirrorless version as well, which I haven't gotten a chance to use, uh, but that will fit inside the Action X30 uh, and above. So overall, I know that one took a uh, lot of time, but hopefully that gave you a really, really good in-depth breakdown of my thoughts on the bag and the new features and design features that uh, Shimoda have imp implemented and my thoughts on them. I honestly really, really love this bag. I use it all the time now uh, when I'm just heading into the city or heading on little weekend adventures when we can go on weekend adventures. I apologize again, I don't have um, a lot more BTS and beautiful B-roll content for you of me using the bag and beautiful sunsets and cliffs, but I had planned on doing that and lockdown occurred. So we're all, all just trying to do our best. If you have any questions or comments on the bag or its features, uh, please don't hesitate to drop a comment below. Again, if you really did like this review and would like to support me and my channel, would appreciate if you gave it a like button and potentially subscribe if you'd like to see more Shimoda content or anything more like this. So without further ado, I would like to thank you and I will see you in the next one. Bye.